Authorities in Russia say more than 60 people have been killed after shooters opened fire in a concert hall near Moscow. It's the worst attack Russia has faced in 20 years. The so-called Islamic State claimed responsibility. In the last hour, officials have said two people suspected of carrying out the attack were detained after a car chase. Others reportedly escaped into a nearby forest. The warning the following report contains images you could find disturbing. This is the moment gunmen opened fire in a Moscow concert hall. Crowds scream and take cover as shots echo through the auditorium. Gunfire could also be heard here in the building's foyer. Those who escaped unharmed describe what happened. I was sitting in the hall upstairs where the balconies were. We heard gunshots. At first, we didn't understand what had happened. Then I personally saw how the terrorists came in, started shooting everyone. In the end, they threw a Molotov cocktail. Everything was set on fire. There was panic. All the people were screaming. Shots were heard. There was panic. Everyone was screaming. Someone was shouting. Someone was shouting, get out. Someone was screaming, shots. While it was horrifying. Fire engulfed the complex and caused part of the roof to collapse. Helicopters doused the flames from above as chaos unfolded on the ground below. Firefighters are at work here at Crocus City Hall. The area affected by the fire is very significant. All the rest will be clear once the firefighters are done with their work. Russian authorities say they have launched an initial investigation after the so-called Islamic State claimed responsibility for the attack. Let's get more on this with Hans Jakob Schindler, Senior Director at the Counter Extremism Project in New York and Berlin. Welcome to the program, sir. First, help us understand this. Why will the so-called Islamic State attack Moscow? Thank you so much for having me. Of course, Russia is part of the target package of the Islamic State. Um, my organization and the U.S. government assume that um, the most likely affiliate of the Islamic State is Islamic State Khorasan that conducted this attack. There's been a noticeable uptick in propaganda of that group against Russia in the last couple of months. The U.S. government has said that it given intelligence to the Russian government two weeks ago on the 7th of March that concerts were a target of the Islamic State Khorasan in Russia in the next couple of weeks. So everything points towards that group being the most likely culprit of this attack. Mm. As you say, and rightly so, the US officials say they had warned Moscow of the possibility of such an attack. So were the warnings heeded or taken seriously? Unfortunately, there was an official statement of uh, President Putin in Russia that basically lampooned the intelligence and called it executive blackmail um, that the Americans wanted to show that uh, Russia is not safe. Uh, I, I guess uh, this didn't age well. It doesn't seem like it did. Uh, back to the IS uh, state group, um, how much of a presence does it actually have inside Russia or in the region for them to be uh, much of a concern? Well, I mean, Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State always had a presence in Russia. Um, I remind you, there were several Al-Qaeda-led attacks in the 90s and early 2000s, including an attack on a theater in Moscow. Um, these seem to be Tajik perpetrators of last night. Um, Tajik perpetrators belonging to ISKP have been arrested several times in Europe, including in Germany since 2020. So ISK is really, ISKP, is really the affiliate of the Islamic State global network that is not but primarily focused on conquering territory, but focused on external attacks. There have been numerous attempts. Mm. So what do we expect now? How will the Kremlin respond to the attack? 
Well, that's the other sad part of the story. Of course, um, Moscow and the Russian government is highly propagandized at this moment, and they will make out of this attack whatever they want to make out of this attack. Because, of course, it's an embarrassment for the security services in Russia and an embarrassment that Vladimir Putin had lampooned the intelligence that pointed to exactly this type of attack. Already, uh, the Russian narrative is uh, construing a second reality. The spokesperson of the foreign ministry in Russia has said if the Americans had intelligence, they should give it to Russia, which they had done prior to the attack. So we are already living in an alternate reality where the official statement released by the official propaganda outlets of the Islamic states saying that they've been responsible for this attack are seen as possibly fake, possibly not true. Um, and everything supposed to be pointing direction Ukraine. So unfortunately, what comes out of Russia has very little credibility at this point. Yeah, and as you say, fingers are being somehow pointed at Ukraine. What could this mean for the ongoing war there? Well, I mean, this is a autocratic regime. Um, it is uh, having taken a distinct turn to a more autocratic, oppressive uh, regime in the last couple of years, in particular since the reinvasion of Ukraine in 2020. And um, the regime will use this for a further turn to the autocratism. It could be further, uh, you know, attacks in Ukraine. Definitely uh, more mobilization of uh, its own soldiers in Russia. So the regime will use this attack. It will not or objectively investigate this attack, at least not publicly, uh, but will use it for its own propaganda purposes. And unfortunately, this will mean that uh, most likely the pressure on Ukraine is going to increase. Right. Hans Jakob Schindler, Senior Director, Counter-Extremism Project. Thank you. Thank you so much.